What's up, YouTube? Baseball Card Junkies TV here, Tops 85401. Titanic Taters. And we just recorded a couple of videos that we'll uh, be releasing out in the next couple of weeks, but Eric and I are just hanging out here, and you know what? We don't have an agenda, do we? Not really. <laughs> so, no agenda. So I guess what we could do is start off by doing a box rummage until people hop on. People love our box rummages. What are so, we going to rummage? I don't know. I'll just grab a box over here. <laughs> on my newly labeled boxes. I just realized we didn't have an agenda. But whatever. We never have an agenda. I guess not. All right. So, okay. So th this will be a fun one because it has like some of my 500 home run club guys. <clears throat> 3,000 hit club and dual player cards. So, lots of different stuff in there. Yep. All right. So, let me just, man, this, I should have probably grabbed a smaller box, but, um, all right. So, oh, now we got people in here. So, anyways, guys, uh, just start commenting and, you know, maybe if you got questions or anything, we can kind of share. But here's some dual player cards. I, I can't read that, so Eric, you gotta read it for me. It's too All right, far away. Let me pour a drink and hang out. Okay, who said that? Pour a drink, hang out. There we go. Some dual Giants relic cards. Here, I'm gonna see if I can... Uh... So hopefully everybody's having a good week so far. How many, how many of you guys are gonna go to uh, Chicago this year? I know I'm gonna be there. Eric is gonna try to make it, but... You're kind of. I talked to my wife about it. Ah, okay. So, uh, so Eric's making progress. We're making Check progress. Check this triple relic out right there. So there we go. Eric, Eric is going to try to upload the video so he can read the comments. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Because I can't read from here. Who likes '90s inserts? We got a nice power alley die cut of the great Tony Gwynn, and we will archive this video. So for all you people that are sorting cards and watching this three years from now. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Will YouTube exist in three years? I don't see why it wouldn't. I mean, YouTube is, I think YouTube's taken over television. No one wants to watch television. They want to watch That's YouTube. Netflix. Ne Netflix has taken over movies in general. Dang, dude. You know what's fun about a box rummage? Like, I forgot I had this card. I don't even know where I got it from, but it's a really cool uh, Tony Gwynn die cut from Leaf, Fra Fractural Matrix. Oh, that's a cool card. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do the rummage and I'll put Eric in charge of um, the comments and then we'll just kind of do that. Nice Tony Gwynn there. Where is he? Crazy Kev is hitting up a small hotel show this Saturday. Ah, very nice. How many tables at the hotel show? Who's familiar with this card? This is the one with the hat tab variation. You could tell because uh, it's got the bill of Tony Gwynn's cap. So if you if uh, if you're familiar with this card, comment down below. Oh, oh damn, this is a great one. Diamond Anniversary Altuve. Ooh, that's a good find. All right, well, who found that card? They Derek find it Martinez. in a pack. He said he forgot he had it. Oh yeah, that's an awesome card to find <laughs> in a rummage. There we go with the Tony Gwynn. This is from um, one of those Elite Series cards from Our big day. show out here was canceled. Yeah, I know. The TriStar show. That's a bummer because I had a bunch of people asking me about it. I think um, Tony Psyched on Baseball Cards was asking me about that show, and I was telling him it got canceled. Yeah. And also Smitty. All, all, the whole West Coast crew, man. We, we won't be able to get together there. Yeah. yeah. It's a bummer. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? We need more collectors here on the West Coast, the or best coast. Or people willing to pay $3,000 to a booth for a weekend. Yeah, true. I remember I bought this card off a YouTuber. Oh, what, what, what the heck was his name? Uh, I, I can't remember. He used to post videos all the time, and now he's not really around anymore. Which card is that? That's a nice dual relic of Tony Gwynn. Oh, that's a cool card. Yeah, it's pretty shiny, pretty cool. What is it number two? 75. Number to 75. Yes. There we go. Nice one there. Nice autograph there. So what are people, anybody got questions? So basically, guys, everybody that's in here with us right it's now. It's a free-for-all. It's a free-for-all. You guys kind of direct the conversation. I'm just showing off cards until we find a subject that will 
um, kind of something we can sink our teeth into. Man, this card's a great card. This is a Canvas Kramer's Choice Derek Jeter. I actually bought this card at the TriStar Show in San Francisco about, I would say about eight years ago now. But just love this card, man. Those old Kramer's Choice cards are awesome. I know you probably have a few McGuire Kramer's Choice cards. I have a couple of them, yeah. Yeah. I'm not that big on the, the, you know, the triangle or circular. Yeah, well, you know what it is? Here, I'll show the card. It's supposed to be like one of those pyramid awards. So when you look at the gold, like the reason why it has that kind of weird cut is they're trying to put a 3D or make a 3D image out of a 2D image. Yeah. Or two-dimensional surface trying to make it look three-dimensional. Anyways, it's supposed to look like a pyramid award. So, uh, let's see, Eric Martinez, best new-ish rookie card to invest in. New-ish rookie card? Man, I don't, I don't know. Is it the, uh, Acuna? It, I, I don't, you know what, you know what the funny thing is, I've, I've been talking on the phone with my friends, and we're, we're, we keep talking about everything is reversed, like we're, people are paying way too much for rookies that are unestablished, so there's no way to really answer that question, because you have to if you really want to make a good investment on rookie cards, in my opinion, you should buy pe uh, players that have established or finished their careers. That way you know at least what you're going to get. But with young players, you don't, you don't know what they're going to do, man. I so, think like around their second year. If they have a good rookie season and then they have a good second season, that's about the time frame, I think, is like kind of like you're not overpaying for it. Mm, yeah, it's hard to say. But like right now, say. you're overpaying for Mike Trout. Well, yeah, I mean he's kind of, he's kind of you're um, over you're overpaying for Mookie Betts. Yeah, right now you are. But like, who's been around for two years? Two years that would be a good buy. Maybe like a Kristen Yelich, but he's probably gone way up now. Yeah, he's I don't really follow the rookie card too. market. I love this card right here, 1980 or 98, uh, Stadium Club. This is a luminescent, triumphant. Oh, man, just love those 90s inserts. Back to the rookie thing. I may even take a step out there and say, like, unless you happen to, like, pull these cards in the pack or, like, get lucky at purchasing, like, a lot of these players' cards, um, like, a space lot, a lot of them. Like, yeah, okay, so... Multiple of the same card. Yeah, quantity. Um, yeah, quantity. quantity. Um, like, realistically, yeah you're better off investing in players that are already established and still good, but are being overshadowed by the big rookie cards. Ah, hey, like that's right a, now would be really a good, good time to buy Chris Bryant. Right? Oh yeah. Or, yeah. you know, Nolan Arenado, um, all these guys that are great players and yeah. are going to have awesome for sure. careers. Yep. For sure. So a little bit of a, uh, Derek Jeter rainbow right there with the refractor and the prism refractor. So what do you, uh, any other questions there, Eric, or comments or, or uh, anything else people, subjects people want to talk about? Man, I love this uh, one, 97 Bowman's No new comment. subjects. Okay. Um, sad news today, the, fra the great Frank Robinson passed away. So a member of the 500 Home Run Club. So I was, uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, here's a card of his I got in this box here. But it's interesting. I, it seems like I get all my breaking baseball news on Facebook. Simply because, well, unless I'm at home and I happen to be watching the MLB Network. But rest in peace, Frank Robinson. You are a great ambassador to the game. And Frank Robinson, guys, was the first African-American um, manager. And I believe it was with the Cleveland Indians. He was a player manager and at the, the very Indian tail end the, the, Indians. the Indians. Yeah, he was a player manager at the very end of his career. And he did manage for the Giants as well for a couple of years. And his autographs just got more expensive. Well, yeah, I mean, but I mean, that's... Uh, uh, let's see. Um, uh, what's my prediction for the A's this year? Uh, great I'm question. an A's fan. I've learned of, over many years of suffering that you don't make predictions. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Sometimes the A's pull a rabbit out of the hat and they have a great season. And sometimes you, you think they're going to have a great season and they suck. 
They they have the talent. They they do have the talent to to make it a deep run. Yes, they do. That's a one of one Mickey Mantle. My son pulled this card out of a pack that I bought for him from Turkey Red. Anything else? Uh, he said in the first manager. Uh, do you have the ninety Pacific in the cage? I do have that card, the ninety eight in the in the cage of. Mark Oh, yeah, that's a great card, man. Yeah, I got the Barry Bonds of that one. You know what? I'm going to bust out my... If you like, you, if, if there's anybody that's into, like, 90s inserts, I'll bust out some of my... Um, you know, I mean, I'll do a box rummage while we're kind of answering questions with some of my Bonds uh, inserts. Distemic so, is asking you, are the Giants getting Bryce Harper? Um, Probably not, but you never know. I know they talked with... I know Harper talked with the Giants for a while yesterday. And I, I'm really glad that the Giants talked to him, but I would be surprised if they signed him. But if they signed him for the right type of deal, I would be thrilled. I, I wouldn't want to do like a 10 or 11 year deal. I think that would just be too long term of an investment. Cause you saw how that worked out with A-Rod, even when he was in his prime and other players when they were in their prime, it just, I don't know, man. Maybe like a five-year deal would be awesome. At like forty million per, you know, well, still a two hundred million Harper's dollar contract. Only like twenty-five or twenty-six, right? Harper? Yeah. Yeah, he's like twenty. Yeah, around that age. Yeah. So, man, in the cage. Let's see if I can find that card. I love that card. Um, I personally think Bryce Harper is going to sign with one of the bigger that. A team that's already a playoff contender. Well, that's what his resume is missing right now. Well, he so did. World I mean, series. well, World Series. I mean, yeah, he, he had been in the playoffs a bunch of times with um, uh, the with Nationals. the Nationals, but yeah, I but don't like know. Like an actual World Series contender. Yeah, poor. Yeah, I mean, you know, I love Dusty Baker, but he does not know how to win in the in the postseason. That's all I got to say about that. But, yeah. So here's an interesting card here. Well, anyways, what other questions and things are people asking now? Uh, let's see. What's going on, junkies? Well, we're just we're talking baseball cards, rummage, talking, doing a box rummage. So that's pretty. Pretty good question. Wants to know what's happening. I am. So. <laughs> so how's everybody doing tonight? Crazy Kev says Dodgers or Padres. He'd be close to Vegas, where Hart is from. Yeah, I know. I know he want. From what I understand, and it's not like I know Bryce Harper personally, but he does want to move back to the West Coast. Maybe because Joey brings it. Lives here on the West Coast, and what is the West Coast? It's the best, best coast. coast. <laughs> so here's a nice one here ultimate collection number to 50 yeah I mean I don't know I, like I feel like players say stuff like oh I want to be here because that's where I'm from but I mean ultimately it ends up being with the money yeah so, well I mean like look at when Ken Griffey Jr. signed with Cincinnati he gave them a break so I mean there are examples of when players will give a break for the hometown discount but it doesn't happen. No, I'm often. not sure that player is Bryce Harper. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean, he uh, definitely would not sign. I don't think he'd sign with the Giants for a hometown discount. But if he got, like, the same deal with the Giants as, let's say, an East Coast team, um, he, you know, like, let's say Tampa Bay or something like that, he probably would end up going ahead and signing with the Giants, you know, yeah. if, if it was the same deal. There's a nice die cut. Uh, Barry Bonds, this one's number 220. So that's a really tough card right there. Uh, let's see. You've been looking. Jesse says he's been looking for the, I guess it's the in the cage McGuire. Um, he's wondering if it's rare. I don't think that's terribly rare. No, that's probably like a $10 to $15 card. Yeah, it's not that, that rare. Range. I mean, I mean, it depends on, the thing is, is like if you're a casual collector, a card like the in the cage card, you might, you would probably consider rare. But if you're an advanced, an intermediate to advanced collector, that's going to be like basically like just just a common insert card, I guess, is what mm -hmm. you would categorize it as. So here's so a couple of see. leaf gold. What's your favorite 90s insert? 
My favorite 90s insert? Man, there's so many great issues from the 90s. Now the question is, do you go in an insert or do you go parallel? I don't know. Here's a pretty nice one right here. The 1998 Donruss Crusade. I happen to have the purple. The purple. That's just a gorgeous card, guys. Anybody that appreciates 90s cards appreciates this. So I saw someone flash up the 96 uh, Select Gold Mirror which I don't have the bonds of that card. As a matter of fact, I don't even think I've ever seen an image of it. So that shows you how rare that card is. And my friend Ben, who's also a bond super collector, told me he's never seen an image of it, never seen it show up on eBay or any of the. So those things are getting traded behind the scenes. They are not showing up on the marketplace. Who's the best autograph in the game, current and former player? What, in terms of aesthetics for the autograph? I would say Mickey Mantle has a pretty damn beautiful autograph. Um, um, Ken Dale Murphy has a pretty nice autograph. I think uh, Ken, Ken Griffey, Griffey Jr.'s Junior. autograph's a little bit overrated. You think so? Yeah. Um, I, I definitely give the nod to like Mickey Mantle or Dale Murphy. Andre Dawson has an absolute perfect penmanship autograph. Uh, who else has some nice looking autographs? Man, they're, they're you know, the older players, the guys that played before, like, the 90s, all of them had pretty nice-looking autos. The well, newer guys don't George have... George Brett's autograph. I like his autograph. Yeah, yeah. Um, the older guys took Tony more pride. Tony has a great autograph. Yeah. The older guys definitely had more pride in their autos. So here's a platinum medallion from Fleer Ultra. This one. Uh, let's see. It's this one here. Oh, this is a nice, a star factor, shiny. They're asking if you have the 91 Desert Shield bonds. I sure do. I got both. But they're not in this box, so I'm not going to get them. But if anybody wants to see an insert oh, that's not yeah, a top sensor. Derek Jeter has a good autograph, too. Mm, no. I think he does. I don't like Derek Jeter because you can't read it like... I mean, it's a it's a definitely un, a unique autograph, but it looks like a five year old just is scribbling like with a um, I don't know. It just looks like a five year old scribble. It doesn't look like Derek Jeter. I can read it. Well, then you're, you're a miracle worker, Eric, if you can read a Derek Jeter autograph. I'm not lots, saying there's lots of good autographs. He definitely has a lot. Like, there's a lot of activity in his autograph. However, if you want to talk about legibility and aesthetics. It's got some flair. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just don't think it's aesthetically that that great. It's not horrible. It's just it's just like a scribble to me. But at least he's putting effort into it. It's not just like like a W. <laughs> some, <laughs> like like if Bryce you look Harper's at, B8. Yeah, like you look at some of those um, modern Bowman rookie autos. The, the, uh, like the, the the autos are un like they they ruin the card in some of them. They're illegible. Yeah. Nick Swisher had a horrible autograph. Really? Like it doesn't even look like a name. It's like uh, three circles. I'm trying to think like which <laughs> ball player from now has a nice looking auto. There's nothing that really stands out in my head, but I'm not really an autograph collector of contemporary players. <sighs> Everybody. Will, yeah, like, Willie Mays autograph was always kind of. A, I actually pulled a Willie Mays autograph from like 2001 Tops or something like that. You did? Yeah. What happened like, to it? Um, I ended up selling it. Like when oh, I first man. pulled it, I was like, "What it, the man. hell is this? It doesn't even say Willie Mays on it." Oh man. <laughs> yeah, the W, the W looks like kind of like a triangle, man. Yeah. On his cards, it's weird. It is weird. So. Let's see, Mariano Rivera has a good autograph. Oh, he does have a good autograph. Yeah, he's got really good penmanship. I would love to get an uh, auto of him, but not now is not the time to buy it, let me tell you. There we go. These were rip cards before rip cards. These were rip cards and jumbo cards. I don't know if you guys knew that. So that's why this card has a print run of 100, but probably there's more like 25 of them out there because some of them are embedded in the jumbo cards. It's true. Yep. My heater turned off, so now you guys can probably hear us better. <laughs> <laughs> so what else are people? Anybody got questions, thoughts? You want to see us? Ask me if I have a uh, have a specific insert card that maybe you're thinking uh, from a set that you like. 
on Vons, as long as it's not top. His Pepino man as crazy in person as he is in his videos. You know what? He is as normal, he's about as normal of a person as you can get in person. So <laughs> that's about all I have to say. I'm probably, if you get Pepino man and me together, I probably will act crazier than Pepino man. And, unless, of course, you're at Taco Bell and, um, you know, then he might get the urge to yell out, out of nowhere, keep collecting baseball cards, forever essay. <laughs> uh, let's see, 91 Elite Series. Do you have any of those? Yeah, but it's uh, it's not in this box because it's graded. <laughs> but I do have the other Elite Series that I can show. So these are all the other Elites that aren't 91. Uh, it's like 93. He didn't, Bonds didn't have a 92. This one's not my favorite one. It's funny, these cards are numbered to 10,000, typically don't sell very well. And this card is numbered to 10,000. It's a year um, early, or it's a, it's a year later and it sells for like a lot. And it's just because, I mean, but it's a beautiful card. And this, I always thought this was a cool card because it shows Barry Bonds at Wrigley Field. I always like the Wrigley Field um, images. Got this one here. This is when they started reducing the print run from 10,000 to 2,500. And then I got, there's two, I got this one here, which is numbered to 2,500. And then there's also like a, um, a sample card of the same card. So I got, I happen to have a sample of that one. So those are some of the uh, Donruss elites. From back the, in the day, the only the only ninety one elite I've ever I ever had was uh, um, the Ricky Henderson I pulled from a pack. Of yeah, man, it's too bad you don't have that car because it's a great story. You've told that story a such bunch of times. Horrible condition by now. Who cares? It would be a cool <laughs> card, man. The condition uh, wouldn't see. matter. When am I going to? When is Titanic Taylor's going to post some of his videos? I know. We were just talking about that. Yeah, he needs to start posting videos. He 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 likes hanging out here doing the baseball card junkies thing TV TV thing here with me. I but, mean, we typically show Dude, like, you got a hell of a collection though. You got to start showing off. I mean, There's just so much stuff. He's got a 4-year-old. That's the thing. That's Eric's true. got a 4-year-old, so that 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 uh, occupies most of his time when See, I don't have a 4-year-old. My son's grown up and moved out of the house, so I can come down to my man cave and make a video anytime I want. Yeah. Um, will we ever start getting our personal collections graded? Um, Joey Brings It has one of my cards <laughs> that I won in a contest, so that's one for you. But Probably I mean, not for no for me. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is like I have graded cards, but I've never sent one in to get graded. That's just not Eric and my thing. We, we're not into graded cards. If I had like a card that I was like, man, this is like gotta be a PSA 10, I'd probably send it in to get it graded. Yeah, I'm sure you um, have a whole whole bunch of uh, potential PSA 10s in your collection. Uh, oh man. Uh, baseball Collector asks, what do we think about getting into the YouTube Hall of Fame for our Baseball Card Junkies channel? Well, we're not in yet. Yeah, so we we don't we, we won't share our thoughts on that unless we get inducted. And then I'm sure we will have a video for that. But Mike, thanks so much for asking about that. If we do, we better each get our own little patches. <laughs> <laughs> we're not sharing a patch. <laughs> I'll, I'll say, you know what I'll do is if we if we if if Mike gets, sends me another patch. I'm going to send it to Tanner Jones and have him make a custom. That would be so sick, man. <laughs> uh, that would be funny. If you guys aren't familiar with Tanner Jones, um, you should look at the customs. Go to Tan Man Baseball Fan. He's got a channel here on YouTube. He makes the most amazing custom cards. So here's a nice run. I don't know if Eric, uh, a.k.a. Oakland A's 915, is in here or not. But if he is, I know he's got the McGuire. Or he's looking for one of these. I think he's looking for the um, the uh, on base percentage one, but there's the whole run of the Barry Bonds production line from 1998 Donruss. Love these cards, man. These cards are buttes, buttes, buttes. Look at that shine! Look at that shine! And that was the 90s were like the 
the era of shine. Dude, like, as soon as those finest refractors came out, like everybody wanted all the manufacturers. There's nothing like a beautiful 90 shiny card, and all the brands did it. All the brands, all the brands participated in the shine. I'm gonna show some um, prism cards. So. Pacific, look at what Pacific was doing in the 90s. They were so ahead of themselves. So let me show you these guys. I know some people show off some of their prisms, but this is like from 98 prism. That's just part of the rainbow. Some of these cards I have in my binder. 98 prism. I think this particular set had maybe 10 different color variations. Here's three of them, but look at that. Look at that gold one, man. Woo, man, that's some shiny stuff right there. Gotta love the 90s. 90s are 90s. Vintage is king, and 90s are a second, a second. Like they're they're like a prince. 90s are prince. Vintage is king. So, so uh, Juan Camarillo. Here's another one. Asks when are we going to make another top 80 cards in the 80s video? Well, we actually did that tonight, but uh, we did we made two of them tonight. So those one will be hitting tomorrow. Oh, okay. I guess Eric will load, upload, upload one of them tomorrow. tomorrow. And then the other one, probably about a week after that. We don't want to upload them too close together. But there's some more shiny prisms from the 90s. This is Pacific Prism. not um, And it's funny, when Pacific was making prism, they spelled it P-R-I-S-M. Uh, and when, uh, when, when um, Panini does it, they spell it P-R-I-Z-M. Uh, kind they of probably a, want to make sure they differentiate. Yeah, who knows? Here, check these cards out too. These, um, what are these? Pacific. Hey, I just got the Conseco. Oh, of this? The one number to 99. Or oh, whatever. yeah, I got the one number to 63 and 99 here. Look at these cards, man. I hope you guys got your shades on. Is, uh, is Eric in the house, a.k.a. those back pages? Yeah, he is. He just commented. Oh, what's up, Eric? <laughs> I know you like these shiny, shiny, shiny 90s cards. Let's just... That's like, uh, you know, a little bit of music to go with that, man. <laughs> it's like a Saturday Night Live video up in here. <laughs> so here's another one. And these cards, ah, love that 90s Pacific shine. Woo! For the win. Eric's like, this guy's too pumped up, man. Yeah. You're asking about Pepino Man. <laughs> there we go. Some die cutage from Pacific. There we go. Now, any other comments, questions? I'm, uh, Eric's in charge. Here, yeah, so. I'm in charge of the comments and questions. <laughs> Start reading some. You want me to read them all? Well, I mean, whatever you feel like reading. Uh, I mean, after all, you're in charge. It's your show, baby. Let's see. Not really, but, you know. Who wants to see some Manny? Those back back pages once oh to see okay it. so Manny Ramirez okay you know what I don't have any Ramirez in this box but I'll grab a box that has Manny Ramirez so let's see what I have I don't know if I have that many but I know I got a few all right uh, let's see <laughs> what's the best BJ Suroff rookie cards uh the 87 uh Fleer there you go Mike, was that a serious question? No. <laughs> well, uh, I remember BJ that card. Surhoff. There's like a Beckett from like 1988 or something where the BJ Surhoff rookie is like, uh, is like a $7 card and it's the most valuable card in the whole 87 uh, Fleer set, if I recall. All right, anyways, that's my thoughts on BJ Surhoff and why I have that useless information. I have no idea. I hope Manny Ramirez is in the so wealth box. of useless information. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Absolute worthless information I just dispensed there. Uh, let's <laughs> see. Do I have Ramirez in it? Well, Eric will. Um, so, this is like the third comment we've gotten about prospects to look for next season. Guys, we're, we Eric and prospect. I are not prospectors. Um, and if you watch our channel, we recommend that you don't prospect. So, but we understand that there are prospectors out I there. I say prospect for future Hall of Fame inductees. There you go. That are already yeah. up for an I mean, I, 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 I look at a prospect card, and it, to me, it has the same. Like, I might as well be looking at a football card. I just, it just, they don't do anything for me. Because I've been collecting for so long that uh, I just, 
Yeah, prospects typically don't pan out. Okay, so I'll show you some exciting Manny Ramirez cards. Here's one, Eric, a.k.a. those back pages. Dude. I probably should Man, put this I am in a better... tired. Man, yeah, you it's are not tired. good to work all day and then... 1997 Bowman Chrome International Refractor of Manny Ramirez. So that's a nice one there. Love that card. Man, that's just a beautiful card. I don't remember buying that one. What other nice ones do I have? I got a few. Oh, this is one of my favorite sets of all time. The nice, uh, 1998 Finest Refractor. Boy, look at that top loader, man. That's like vintage. That's a vintage. <laughs> it's all like yellow. I know. You know it's a couple of those. Dude, this thing is yellowing. I got I got to replace that top loader. And I love this one here. This is a um a Stadium Club Chrome refractor. I really don't have a lot of Manny cards. So, this will probably be disappointing for you Manny Ramirez fans. So, it's, then, uh, Eric Martinez says a lot of new players have stepped into the YouTube game. What do you guys think about players becoming more social? I think it's great for the game. Uh, well, I mean, it's just another social media um, option for players to reach out to their fans. I don't really follow anybody on YouTube that's a player. I don't know of anybody uh, on YouTube. I know Alex uh, Alex Rodriguez has a YouTube channel. My buddy um, sent me a link to his channel the other day, so I thought that was kind of interesting. I think baseball is late to the game in that. I think, like... You know, I also bass fish, and, like, fishing pros have been on YouTube for years now. Yeah, but you know what? Fishing pros aren't on TV, like baseball or basketball yeah, pros. They are. They're on ESPN 12. So, ESPN, I mean, the Ocho. Yeah, I mean, I, so I'm telling you, like, they probably would get more views on YouTube than they would on ESPN 23. Check this card out, man. I'm telling you, 99 hey, Bowman's they're on Best. they're Outdoor Network. They're on. <laughs> yeah, I know. But who watches that? I mean, you, you might as well. I mean, not everybody even has the Outdoor Network. or Not everybody even knows. And some or, or not everybody knows that the Outdoor Network exists. Now, Eric, a.k.a. those back pages, and Titanic Taters for that matter. But he was doing a video last night about the etching on some of the new Prism cards. Here we go with the 98 Bowman's Best, and look at that etching on, on Frank Thomas's pants. I mean, the etching really, really, really brings out the full luster. This is not an atomic, by the way. It's just a regular refractor. But it brings out the full luster of the image. It really makes it pop. It makes you just want to stare at the card forever. Look at Thomas's jersey. Look at that etching where the wrinkles are in the jersey. Just beautiful. Beautiful. And all refractors, all shiny cards should have use that etching technology. Uh, sure, it costs a lot of money, though. So That's why you pay $12 for a pack. True. Here's another one. This is like one of the last years Bowman Chrome did etching before they got cheap. But 2006 <laughs> Bowman Chrome, there is etching on that one. If you look at 2007 uh, Bowman Chrome, it's like a flat finish. There's no etching. Yeah. They look horrible compared to this. That's just a beautiful card there. See, everyone knows Bill Dance. Watch the Bill Dance bloopers. Those are freaking hilarious, dude. Who's Bill Dance? Bill Dance, he was a professional bass fisherman. Oh, well, see, I don't follow And he that. has, like, his own, like, fishing show that's uh, been, like, on TV forever. All right, well, I gotta go somewhere later. Bill Dance bloopers, if you ever want to watch funny, an old dude. Okay, I'll have to check this out. <laughs> a guy right. that's been bass fishing, he's like in his, what, like 70s or something now, and he's been bass fishing since he was probably going to hold a ride. And wow. Like he just does stuff that you're like, oh my word, like, <laughs> how is this even possible? <laughs> that's funny. Um, let's see here. Making We should th make a video on the best cards of the 90s. We did a oh man the thing about rookies of the nineties oh god the thing about making a video for the best cards of the nineties that's like making a video for the hottest chick at um, the hottest chick of the nineties that was that appeared on a what a spring break video you know from like MTV Spring Break or whatever I mean there's just so many options like there's no way we could do best card cards of the 90s we could maybe do best insert sets of the 90s but the problem is 
I don't have examples from every insert set from the nineties. Hottest chick in the nineties, but how do you, how would you weigh your voting on that? Uh, that's you know? that's a problem with the the <laughs> coolest cards. There's just so much variety for the nineties, man. Yeah. I mean, nineties nineties are right up there with vintage, man. I just I love them, man. I love I love nineties cards. I, I, I mean, do I you say, go by like longevity, what they look like now, like how well the the looks stayed and like maintained. Dude, just you just go by, man. Just like, just look at that. I was shine. gonna say, Victor Grimes, go Jennifer Love Hewitt. I was gonna say, Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yeah, that's not too. a bad choice. She was freaking smoking. I mean, just anyway. stuff like this was. I mean, this card's like a cheap, maybe like ten or twenty dollar Griffey card, but this is '90s, guys. You got wood, you got a photo. I mean, and I mean, this card is just cool, and this is like it's '90s is chocked with this stuff. Some of it's rare, some of it's, you know, not that rare, but cool. Something like this, I mean, I'm sure this is a Leaf product. Oh, it's numbered to 5,000, okay. So there's 5,000 cop, but that card is cool, man. 90s are awesome. Man. A lot of cool cards in the 90s. Yeah, here's another one. A lot of people love this set. The, um, oh, what do they call it? The slideshow, slide yeah, look at that. Looks like, if you, ever, if you guys ever had a projector, you know, you could have like a slideshow. That's just a cool card. Cool card, man. Ooh, Chris Hiller says Jennifer Aniston. That's a good one, too. But only for, like, the first, like, three seasons of Friends. <laughs> like, the first three seasons, she was at her hottest. I don't know. She's, like, pretty damn hot now. She's, like, she's like one of those women that gets hotter as she gets older, man. There are some women out there that get hotter as they get older. J-Lo. Yeah, I mean, there are just some women that just get, I mean, they, they, oh, man, I love older hot women. But anyways. <laughs> We're older <laughs> hot like, women junkies TV. <laughs> I know. Huh? Oh, man, there's nothing better than older, <laughs> older hot women. So there we go. Um, a very nice, shiny Ken Griffey Jr. there. And then this is another example of 90s greatness. I mean, th th this stuff's all, of, guys, if you, anybody going to the National, my recommendation, if you want to pick up just really cool stuff, look for that rare 90s stuff or look through those dollar boxes and try to pick up some 90s gems, man. Not even rare 90s stuff necessarily. Yeah. Like you can find stuff numbered to, Here's another you know, 5,000 or 2,500 or even 1,000. Yeah, but the thing is the yeah. numbering on those 90s cards, like if it's the early to mid 90s and it's numbered to five or 10,000, you could pretty much take that print run and divide it by four. Because a lot of those cards are either sealed in packs, they got thrown out because kids were, you know, busting packs back then and the cards weren't taken care of. Um, and so that'll eliminate a lot of them. Look at that card, man. Look at that die cut action. Just card companies, there, there was a lot of competition. It wasn't like how yeah, it is stuff now. Like or... that Griffey you just showed. The, oh, man, look at this one. Uh, what was that, the holographics or whatever you just showed? No, this is a triumphant. Not that one. Oh, oh, yeah, that holographics, yeah. Like, you can get that for a few bucks. I bet you, yeah, you could probably pick it up for like five bucks. Yeah. This card here is cool. Another die cut action. And it's got shine. It's die cut. Looks great. I mean, it, you're, you're like mesmerized when you're looking. I mean, dude, I could like seriously with that. Here, let me find that card again. Where the hell is it? You could like seriously um, hypnotize somebody with this card. Like. Look at this card very so closely. Max is asking, how cold is it up there, up here? Well, I'm like wearing a beanie. Mid-30s at night. Yeah, Max, I assume we're, we got the same type of temperatures as you do. We as a matter of fact, look at this. On the garage door, I had to remove all the cards because my garage door is uh, picking up moisture at nighttime, and I don't want my stuff to get ruined. That's how cold it is. I'm getting condensation. On my Tops 85 401 Man Cave Garage Door Wesker Griff. <laughs> By the way, Wesker Griff, if you, I know you're going to watch this archive while you're sorting cards. But where is it? Um, see, it's unplugged. I know for years you've been worried. Well, what if somebody opens your garage door? It's unplugged. <laughs> it's unplugged <laughs> so there's tragic. no way yeah there's no way that it's gonna accidentally um open up in the middle of the night or while i'm at work or or whatever so. anyway it snowed <laughs> the other the other night it snowed in sonoma and petaluma yes it did 
Yep, I was ready for the snow. I actually texted Eric, and I'm like, dude, check check this out, and it showed like 30% snow. I'm like, yeah, man, your little boy Owen would love that if it snowed, but it didn't snow. But Yeah. Oh, right, here, you want to talk about etching. That's a good one. Man. And the camera's not picking up. There's a lot of glare. 98 Bowman's best refractor. It's a good point from Dustin Bellinger. What did Dustin have to he say? He said, back when card companies were innovative in creating new designs and weren't taking the lazy way out and convincing us we need to buy 32 versions of the exact same card. That's pretty much true. Yep. I mean, Dustin, your sentiments are pretty much standard within the card collecting community. And that's, I mean, Tops has full licensing. I mean, Panini does what they can, but yeah, I mean, Tops really doesn't have a whole lot of competition. So, like, I kind of like missed the days where you just had, like, you had Finest, and then you had Finest Refractors. Yeah. And had... I mean, I like, the, I like the Rainbow Refractors too, but yeah. What what's probably one of the most underappreciated players of the nineties? Well, I will show you guys. Sammy Sosa. Uh -huh. Sammy Sosa. Very, very underappreciated. Oh, look at that gold shine in the background. Woo! I love these special FX die cut cards, man. These things are awesome. This is from 96 SP. It's a great card there. I don't even know if I appreciated him during the home run race. Well, that's because you're a McGuire guy, <laughs> dude. You don't want Sosa, like, passing up McGuire. He did for a little bit. Yes, he did. <laughs> uh, he thought uh, he what did Henry S. Like say, man? That's my boy, Henry S. Uh, it snowed here. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, he... he, he, he uh, it's going to snow out where Henry lives, that's for sure. But, I mean, to us, like... The last time it snowed, I think my son was Eric's son's age. Maybe, yeah, about four it's years like old. 20 years ago. Yeah, my son's 20 Nin years old 18, now. 19, yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah, so. And I lived in Sonoma, and I worked in Petaluma, so I... I mean, we remember this way. day, right? Like, 16, 17 years later, we remember the last time it snowed here. And we're not talking about, like, in the hills, because where we live, it'll snow in the hills sometimes. We're talking about on... Like in in uh, sea level or around sea level. Uh, Dave J Dave C J ten is asking if you have all the ninety nine Pinnacle Epic spawns. Um, ninety nine Pinnacle. Yeah, I do have all of them, except for the test issue ones that were not released because Pinnacle went out of business that year. But um, I here, let me show you. Most of them are in my binders, but I know that there's the one that has a print run of thirty. Oh, I don't. Ha it's in a different box. I do have that card. <laughs> I found it at the 2017 National. Nate has a lot of boxes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I could bust that card out if you want to see it, but most of them are in my binders. Those cards are beautiful, though. I do like them. Yeah. I know there are test issues, like, um, but I don't really count those. Well, I have all the pack issued ones. Yeah, I'm not big into the test issues or backdoored. Yeah, they're they're fun if you can get them at a good price, but I'm not gonna pay like you know astronomical pricing. Five hundred bucks. Yeah, the Griffey collectors, the hardcore Griffey collectors, are the ones that really pay big money for those cards. There are certain players that those cards command a lot of money, but for whatever reasons, none of the Bonds collectors really go after them, so they tend not to sell for very much. You can pick up the Bonds ones for cheap, which I haven't even bothered to do. Yeah. So what other comments are we getting there? Oh, just a lot of talking about snow. Oh, yeah, snow's a lot of fun to talk about. Yes, okay. Uh, <laughs> Everybody's getting a little just piece of the there. snow action. Who is that from? Is Says, that coming up on uh, your phone? I collected Chiro. What up, Ray? I'm jealous of your organization. Oh, uh, well, uh, you could always organize your cards. I mean, um, He's, but I know you got a lot of stuff because you're busting wax for years there, and you put all your cards away in, into boxes. So Nate's organization is so Nate can find everything. 
True. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little different than what maybe some people would consider like organized. Well, I don't have a spreadsheet or anything. Like I'm not one of those people with a website or a spreadsheet or a checklist or anything. I have the I have the brain organ organization. What's yes. Bob saying on there? Uh, Super twenty five. What's up, fellas? Hey, what's up, Bob? I <laughs> uh, see. De he's. De I collected churros in desperate need of a man cave. Yeah, with well, with the with your collection, Ray, I imagine you do need a man cave because uh, you got an incredible collection. I need a man cave. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can hang out here with me. That, that. <laughs> it's not the same. I know, it's not the same. Right. Anyway, I'm going to put this box away. Maybe I'll grab a smaller box of cards. Oh, I'm in desperate need of a man cave so I can have my baseball cards and all my fishing stuff in one place. Oh, dude, that would be epic, dude. Like, half your man cave is fishing and the other half is <laughs> baseball cards. And then you could have Snoop come over and hang out with you all day. It would be the true man cave. Yeah. So, I don't have much of a vintage collection, but... <clears throat> anyway, I'll show off a few vintage cards. You like vintage, huh? All right. Vintage is fun. Yeah. Yeah, I like these old classics. There's an old classic Warren Spawn. Yeah, we got that. Is that in a magnetic? Nah, dude, it's a screw. Oh, it's like, they make screw downs, just so you guys know. If you look hard enough, you could find a screw down for a 52 through 56 tops card. That's what this is. Oh, uh, that's why it looks different. Yeah, I, I'm not going to send it in for grading, so. Another Hall of Fame, ah. Uh. Um, Hoyt Wilhelm. You know this guy came into the league when he was 27 years old and he pitched for over 20 years? Who's that? Hoyt Wilhelm. Oh. He had a really good career, man. Hall of Famer. Uh, um, Monty Irvin. This one's autographed by the great Monty Irvin. So that's a great card there. And let's see what else here you go. Oh, I got another Hoyt, Hoyt, Hoyt Wilhelm. Hoyt Wilhelm. That's when he was with the Giants. Gigantes, 54 tops. And then we got a... Uh, so Chris Hillard is asking how many times have we been to the national show? I've been zero times. I'm trying to get this guy to go this year. And I've been out twice. This will be my third year. There we go. Uh, 55 Bowman. The Bowman Television, Willie Mays. That's a cool card. And what up, Iska fan? He sent me this card because I guessed how many. He had a stack of 188 Donruss. Uh, who, oh, man, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, who's who's Iska fan's favorite player? I can't think of the guy's name right now. Damn it. So, sorry, Josh, if you end up watching this. But anyways, he cut the deck in half, and I guessed how many, and so he sent me this card. So a very, very beat up, but beautiful 56 Jackie Robinson. So I love that card. Um, Glenn Davis, Glenn Davis. He had a stack of 88 Donruss Glenn Davis cards. All right, I came through, I came through at the end, guys. Uh, here's a card, um, I forget who is, oh, like some, no, there's a new Nolan Ryan collector on YouTube, and this guy's got an absolutely incredible collection of Nolan Ryan's. And one of the cards he showed off, he had it graded a PSA 10. If I could find it in here, I'll show you guys. But it's a really cool card. It is a 1977. Nolan Ryan is like such an epic player though too. 1977 cloth sticker, Nolan Ryan. Love that card. Great card. That's what the cloth stickers look you know like on the awesome back. what's awesome about collecting Nolan Ryan? Is like, there's really not a lot of cards of Nolan Ryan. From like, his playing from days? From his playing days. Well, he he played, I mean, he has cards from what, 68 through 90? Yeah, but three? 68 through what? 80 was mostly tops. Yeah, well, yeah, right? with except for like, like some of Kellogg's those. Like the Kellogg's. Yeah, or and whatever. A few other release, like food releases and box sets and stuff like that, yeah. So, 
Here's my crappy example, but still really cool. Dennis Eckersley rookie card. Whoa. Oh, man. Good thing it's in a screw down. Party okay. foul. Uh, it's in a screw down. I have a, I have a PSA 7 <laughs> of that one. But here we go. Um, Eck. Eck is in the house. And this card, I remember it has like a gum stain on the back. Maybe not. Anyway, it's a cool card. I like it. I, I, everybody needs a Dennis Eckersley card in their collection, right? Uh, Jesse Barber is asking you, Nate, yes. in your opinion, what do you think the value for 64 Tops Giant set is worth? I would say, Wait, depending on the... Really sharp, but some have centering issues. Probably about 250 bucks. Sharp with centering issues. Tops, 250, between 200 and $250 if it has centering issues, but clean. That set is just so affordable, man. The 64 Tops Giants is... I've been to card shows where people have had, like, really mintage sets, and I probably could have picked up, up the complete set for, like, 250 bucks. They're, they were asking, like, 300 So, um... Did you Super 25, if you're listening, what would you say that set um, is worth? The 64 Tops Giants? Super 25 Sports Cards is an expert and vintage cards, and, and he would know better than me. Nate just made up a new word. What? Mintagey. Mintagey. Oh, yeah. That's what you said. Mintagey. <laughs> yeah, I combined vintage and mint. Mintagey. Here's a great card. I When I first bought this card, I thought someone colored in Lou Gehrig's eyes. It's a, a 63 Fleer, or six, I mean a 61 Fleer. But then I looked up other images of this card on the internet, and I was pleased to find that his eyes are kind of colored in identically to this one on all examples. So in other words, Fleer did something weird. Or no, that's red. It's red. And anyways, Fleer did something weird with his eyes on that card. Uh, Eric remembers when I bought this card. Yeah. Ridiculous. I got it that's for so a stupid. dollar. I don't know how. I forget how I got it for a dollar. It was like in it was some... That, it was that one dude that it was in like... The dollar bin. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I couldn't. Not yeah. even the dollar bin. It was in their box of cards that have no prices, and you just ask how much it is, and the guy was like, a oh, dollar. He, I bought it. <laughs> he had no idea what it was. Yeah, maybe that's how I got it. I don't know. I can't remember. But um, anyways, so <clears throat> any other questions, guys? Uh, Not so far. Okay. I remember I bought this card from a local card shop probably around 1998 for 50 bucks in 1998. Very nice Mickey Mantle card there. So you can't go wrong with a vintage a Mickey Mantle. I do like that card. That looks like a spring training. As a matter of fact, I know for a fact this is a spring training photo. <laughs> what up, Xavier? Snoop in the house. Max Jackson saying what's up to Xavier. Hey, Snoop, I've been trying to educate Nate on bass fishing. <laughs> he, th he thinks that, you know, bass fishing isn't even on TV. Well, evidently... Doesn't know who Bill Dance is. No, I don't, you know, I don't know, man. I, well, I, I think that if you're a bass fisherman, you're going to get more um, popularity through YouTube than you are on ESPN 17.34. It's the Ocho. It's ESPN 8, the Ocho. Oh, is that what it's called? <laughs> oh, that's from base, uh, uh, Dodgeball. Haven't you ever seen that oh, one? Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, I knew I heard that term, the Ocho, somewhere. So here's one of my favorite Willie Mays cards. 1960. And, man, I am going to be on the hunt for the 51 Bowman when I go to Chicago later this year. Uh, Disco wants to know if I can... Disco187 wants to know if I can show my bass fishing lure collection. It's almost as bad as my baseball card collection. Oh. I have a lot of fishing lures. Dude, you know what you need to do is you need to post a fishing video on your Titanic Taters channel. So people will stop asking you about it. Uh, you can... Uh, See, I'm being a, I'm being a smartass. I, I there's know. actually a link <laughs> on Baseball Card Junkies TV. You can go to my 
fishing channel. Oh, really? It's a recommended channel. Oh, damn. Okay, <laughs> there you go, guys. Check out Eric's fishing channel. Uh, it's just me out there fishing. Like, I'm recording some tournaments that I did, but... I've fun. never even watched uh, Eric's fishing videos, but... Uh, do they get more views in your Titanic Taters uh, videos? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I most I didn't really keep with it. I just kind of got sidetracked. Yeah. I decided I want I didn't want to record myself fishing anymore because you spent more time like focusing on recording and like than you did actually fishing. So yeah, I could see how that would take away from the experience. Yeah. So you need someone there to archive the event on your behalf if you're going to do that. Exactly. Ah, okay. And I'm not paying someone to record me fishing. And you certainly aren't getting me out there. Actually, I don't know. If you, I, if you never asked me, actually. Who knows? Maybe I would record for you. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like Snoop uh, subbed your fishing channel. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's fun. It's a good hobby. Gets yeah. you out there, gets you out in the open and on yeah. the water. And... Yeah. <sighs> so it's getting it? close to my bedtime. <laughs> this guy's an old <laughs> fart. All right, well, you know what that means, guys. That means we're going to exit this live stream. But thank you, everybody, for joining. And, um, yeah, it was fun tonight. I had fun uh, chatting with you guys, showing some cards off, talking a little bit of fishing, talking baseball cards. <laughs> and hot women from the 90s. And hot women from the 90s. <laughs> and so until next time, guys, as always, happy collecting.